So in this lesson we will look at uh, how metal solidifies, the solidification time, okay. We will look at the basic definitions of what is temperature and gradient and cooling rate and things like that. We will finally uh, estimate the solidification time and rate for different metals as a function of properties, okay. So let me start from something which you know are very familiar with and very comfortable with. So you have something called as a, in a, in a alloy composition, okay, pure metals have a single point above which they are liquid, below which they are solid. But if you take an alloy, you start looking at two lines. The red line or the liquidus line is the temperature for a given composition above which it is liquid, okay. Solidus line or blue line is below it is definitely solidus. In between, it is in a mixture state. It is in a mixture state of liquid and solid, okay. And for a given composition, we can find out what is that liquidus and solidus temperature from the phase diagram, okay, that we know already. And you also know that these eutectics and pure metals okay, have this single point. So there is no liquid solidus, both kind of merge into a single point. We call this melting point. But it is rare. For most common purposes, we talk about a freezing range, which is the difference between liquidus temperature and solidus temperature. And then we say that short freezing range metals are those where temp this difference is less. Long freezing range metals is where difference is more, okay. And of course, no one says what is short and what is long, okay. By and large, below 50 degrees is short, above that, above 100 is definitely long freezing range, okay. So these are definitions which we look at. Then let me now introduce some basic uh, terms here. One is we talk about temperature versus distance, which means supposing there are two points in a casting A and B, okay, and they have two different temperatures. A has low temperature, B has high temperature, okay. The gradient between A and B is nothing but difference between temperature by the distance between them. So in, in engineering terms, we say dt by dx. This is a measure of uh, the availability of heat flow, okay. Heat can flow from B to A and uh, the gradient is important there. Higher the gradient, the better the heat flow will be. The next concept is cooling rate. The same location 1, let us location, sorry, location A let us say, but different times. Initial temperature is high, after some time temperature is falling down to 2, okay. And we say that the cooling rate is nothing but T2 minus T1 by the time difference. So we have what we say is dt by d tau, tau for time is a cooling rate. So we introduced three concepts now. We talked about temperature and freezing range, we talked about temperature gradients and talked about cooling rates. Now these three you must be, you have to be really clear in your minds and not to get confused because everything else depends on this. Now look at the, how the metals cool. If you look at how metals cool, pure metals, liquid solidus line is a flat line. In alloys, it is a, it is an inclined line, okay. Solidification begins at some point, ends at some point, in between it is in a, what is called as mushy state, a mixture of liquid and solid state. And now let us have some fun, okay. We look at, we are trying to see in, in a PowerPoint slide, how a casting really cools down. So let me just get the picture right first. So what you see is a casting red metal, hot metal in the middle, surrounded by, on the left side you have a sand mold, uh, standard code we are putting as a yellow or brown color and a metal mold on the right side, putting a gray color for that. On the bottom you see the temperature plotted there. So if you see at the instant of pouring, when magically the entire casting is filled with liquid metal, the entire casting is a, let us say liquidous temperature, okay. And the entire mold, which has not realized that metal has been poured, is at room temperature. A is ambient or air temperature. That is at the initial instant of time, maybe first microsecond. Now you see the, how the graphs are moving. Now depending on your process, if you are sand casting, look at the sand mold. If you are a metal casting, you look at um, metal mold, you look at um, the right side picture. After some time, the casting starts cooling from the sides. Casting portion at the contact with the mold wall cools first, comes down to solidus temperature. What is happening to the mold? If you see sand mold, the face of the mold in contact with the metal sees a steep increase in temperature. But outside the mold, if you touch the mold, it is still at room temperature. Why? Because mold is, sand mold is not conducting. It is a highly insulating thing. 
So it doesn't really know what is happening inside. Outside doesn't know what is happening inside. It is highly insulating. But metal mold is highly conducting. So the entire metal mold temperature will rise. So you should not touch metal mold, burn your hands. That is after some time. As you take some more time to solidify, now casting is almost solidified. Now the mold outside starts rising temperature. It becomes warm. Okay? And the metal mold becomes even more hot because now metal is conducting from outside, inside to outside. Okay? And now both of them are ending the solidification. So the way the metal solidifies in a sand mold and a metal mold is quite different. And the way temperatures change in a sand mold, metal mold also is very different. This is the beginning of our analysis of how metals solidify in a different types of molds. Now, heat has to be transferred. And first of all, what heat have you transferred? You are talking about the heat from your pouring temperature to liquid as to solid as to room temperature, all that heat has to be transferred. Okay? Plus, you also have the latent heat. As it changes from liquid to solid, you have latent heat coming out. All that heat has to be coming out of the mold. How does it come out? If you take a sand mold, and let us say I have an open feeder on the top. First of all, metal will radiate heat to the atmosphere. Right? So, radiation is there. If it is steel casting, this lot of heat will be radiated from an open feeder. Mold also absorbs some heat. That also will be uh, by usually by conduction. And then, as a mold becomes hot after some time, the side, the air becomes hot and the convection also heat comes out. And the thickness of the arrows represent how much heat is the rate of loss of heat. So, if it is steel, which is very hot, a lot of radiation heat transfer is there. Mold is not very conducting, some conduction will be there, but not at the second level of or mode of heat transfer. Finally, the third one is your side of the mold. Mold does not become hot that fast, so convection is not much. The reverse, if you see in a metal mold, Metal mold is highly conducting, so maximum heat is transferred from the by conduction to the mold itself. Okay. Then, typically you pour aluminum in these molds, and aluminum temperature radiation heat transfer is, if it is a heat steel temp point temperature is twice the aluminum point temperature, what do you think is will become a radiation heat transfer? So, if my temperature is, is half from steel to aluminum, my radiation heat transfer is half to the power 4 to the power 4, 1 by 16th, okay, 1 by 16th time heat transfer. So, it is hardly any radiation from aluminum. In fact, if you want a riser to be effective in aluminum, a open riser is more effective in aluminum metal mold, are you getting my point, than a blind, blind feeder, because less heat transfer from radiation. Right? And if it's if it's completely blind, there's a lot of heat transfer from the mold itself. And convection also is little more than sand casting because mold becomes hot faster. So there are three modes of heat transfer in a sand and metal mold. Now also geometry of the part plays a role. If you have a flat surface, let us say that is one kind of a flow. But if you have a uh, if you have a outside corner, if you have outside corner like the bottom one, heat can go out very easily. Whereas inside corner, convergent heat flow and internal corner becomes very hot. So again, heat transfer is depending on your type of mold geometry. This is also an important uh, picture here. And what you see is a cross section of the mold on the top. You see liquid metal on the left side and, and casting is there, further there. We are just cutting middle of the casting there. And then liquid plus solid and solid metal. And between metal and the mold, within the first few seconds, as, a, as the casting freezes, it starts moving away from the wall and you have a thin layer of air gap. An air gap acts like an insulation. You remember thermos flask, you put a vacuum or an air gap, it works fine. So, there is a insulation there and the mold itself is insulation and then you have air. So, if you see the temperature fall in the mold, uh, in, the, in the metal, if you put thermocouples in the center of all these, all these places. Initial liquid metal temperature is flat more or less, then liquid to solid, then solid metal is a further fall. Because at the boundary of the mold, you have low temperature and heat is coming out of that. Then the mold side of the wall, okay, the, the, the mold face facing the casting at the air gap is high temperature, but not to liquidus or solidus temperature. 
and in the air gap there is a huge amount of temperature fall. Then you have mold temperature falling like that and finally the air. That is your picture of temperature fall right from casting to air gap to the mold to air. Now you have some equations coming in, but I will start with the basic equation which you all have read in the high school, which is heat conducted is equal to or rate of heat conduction, small q is rate of heat conduction is which is equal to big Q which is total heat conducted by area, okay, which is equal to K which is conductivity multiplied by temperature gradient, dt by dx is temperature gradient. For a transient heat transfer where the mole temperature is changing all the time, that equation is not valid, we need to have a full transient heat transfer equation. You do not have to worry about the equation by itself except that there is a solution for that and you can finally find all you need to know is that it is possible to do this. What is that? You see a second equation there, temperature at x, location x as a function of time, temperature at different locations at different time is equal to a big function. Initial temperature, final temperature, you know distance x from the boundary and then alpha is your material properties, the function of your conductivity specific heat and density. With all that, what I want to tell you is we did some experiments and did some hand calculations. If you do that, what we did was take a simple cube of about uh, 10 centimeter cube. We made slices in the mold wall and at each point in the mold wall, we calculate temperatures and we plot them. And here is a very nice uh, piece of knowledge for us to apply in the real foundry. What is tells us that within about, if you see the cast, casting thickness is 10 centimeter, 100 millimeters within about let us say 25, 30 millimeters from the, from the junction, casting mold junction, temperature coming down to almost normal, which means the maximum heat is absorbed in the very first, you can say one or two inches of the mold wall for a 100 millimeters cube. And that tells us that you do not really need a mold beyond that. Sometimes people worry about putting too many castings in a single mold. So we have done some research to find out what is the optimal gap between two cavities at which you do not start getting any problems. Okay. And then finally, if you solve the equation some more, you do not have to solve, someone has solved it for you already. You get this famous equation called as Chernow's equation, a Russian scientist who invented this first or discovered this equation first, which says that solidification time, tau is solidification time is equal to a factor k multiplied by volume by cooling surface area squared where k itself is a function of several parameters. If you see k is equal to the bottom most equation I am looking at, k is equal to on the top part you have the properties of the cast metal, on the bottom side you have properties of the mold material. Okay. Top you have got density of the casting, latent heat of the casting, specific heat of the casting, temperature of pouring okay, minus temperature of solidus temperature. On the bottom side you have Connect, thermal conductivity of the mold material, density of the mold material and the specific heat of the mold material and the solid dust temperature. You can take ambient temperature almost as 0 if it is a steel, the difference is going to be very small. So, you can even remove T A from the bottom if you want, you will not make any big difference. But remember this is equal to uh, 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 solidification time is equal to or proportional to square of the V by A and V by A is called as model less of the casting. So, we take a simple shape. And this equation please remember is valid only for simple shapes, simple spheres and cylinders and maybe square blocks and things like that. So if you do the calculation for this simple shape, we found that if it is a aluminum in a sand mold, the solidification time is coming to 32 minutes. Okay. And as in the similar equations for metal molds, okay, where solidification time is proportional to k v by a, but this k is a different k, please remember that. And this k top part is almost same. The bottom part, you have a new factor coming in which is H and later on we will find this H is actually a very naughty character. Okay. What I mean is it is never, you cannot hold it, you cannot catch it. I mean this H is, what is H? You cannot even grasp it. It keeps changing from metal to metal, combination to combination, temperature, it, even for a particular combination of metal and geometry and, and point temperature, it changes with time. So it is a very, very difficult character and no one knows what is the right value of H. Unless you know H value you do not have a solidification temperature. So what most people do is in industry, 
they find the solidification temperature and some solidification time of particular casting, reverse calculate the H value and use that H, H value for similar castings. So, that is a chicken egg problem. You need H value to calculate solidification time, but you need solidification time to calculate H value. So, you need to have cycle between the these two. <coughs> now, with this equation, if you calculate for the same, same metal, aluminum, same casting, but now in a metal mold, the time is reduced to about half. So, compared to sand mold, a metal mold solidification time is typically half and this has been verified by a lot of experiments also. You do not expect 10 times solidification time, it is just about half. Okay. So, what you have learnt in this lesson is um, basic definitions of freezing range, temperature gradients, cooling rates, okay, how temperature falls in a sand mold, and metal mold and the resistance to heat transfer, different heat transfer modes and how it is resisted by different bodies in on the way and then solidification time equation for sand mold and metal mold. Okay. <coughs>